dear students, today we talk about double entry bookkeeping. And some students find this concept rather boring. But to me that's not true, because bookkeeping has an inner beauty and we will learn about that. But book, double entry bookkeeping is also a system, there's actually empirical studies about it, which show that countries which introduce double entry bookkeeping for taxation and other purposes, that these countries became more fair, more regulation based, in a positive sense, bribery went down and as a result they became economically more successful. So let's look at the system. So the system actually comes already from the 15th century and Luca Pacioli is one of the creators of the system and one of his famous quotes is the ancient haven't taken into consideration the rigorous construction of the human body so he compares this with the human body elaborated all their works as especially their holy temples according to these proportions so now he refers to religion which we don't do nowadays so much anymore for they found here the two principal figures without which no project is possible. The perfection of the circle, the principle of all regular bodies and the equilateral square. So what is really talking about is a circle and double entry bookkeeping just creates this circle for the documentation of financial events. So, Let's go into the concept itself. Um, so what does double entry bookkeeping do? It documents relevant events and each event is documented on at least two accounts. On the debit side and on the credit side as we will learn in the moment. So at least one account is then affected on the debit side and the other is on the credit side. So there is basically something like give and take. This is just very simplified, but just to give you this example. So someone, something comes from somewhere from one account and goes to another account. So when we document relevant events, then we do this in a chronological order and in older times, of course, in the 15th, 16th century and so on, there were no computers, there were no ERP systems, enterprise resource planning systems like SAP and others. So you did this basically in a journal. And we will see a journal, how it looked like in older times at the end of this session. And the account records, there are clear instructions which accounts and which amounts have to be documented as increases and decreases. So we will learn this in a moment. But this also, because we have basically a standardized system, makes it audible. So an auditing firm basically can do this all over the world because the standards are all the same all over the world. So they can look at the numbers, they can check if a company follows the standards of double entry bookkeeping. So because we have also the standardization, it has another benefit. Because the other benefit is basically it's a simplified language. So if we book something and we know the one account, the other account and the amount, then we basically need only something like five words to record a booking. And that makes it very easy. Also this we will learn in a moment. Let's look first at the T account. The T account is called a T account. You can already see it because this is like a T. So on the left side of a T account we find the debit side, on the right side we find the credit side. And then there's a structure which holds over all accounts and this is very important to remember because in a moment we will see that it's basically all driven by the balance sheet. But if we have an asset account like we have on the left side of the balance sheet, then increases are recorded on the debit side and the opposite decreases are recorded on the credit side. If we have capital accounts which are on the right side of the balance sheet, it is just the opposite. So we have 
decreases on the debit side and increases on the credit side. So it's basically just the opposite. So what you have to remember here is how the balance sheet is structured and then you already know on which side a booking has to take place. Just a very simple example. I buy raw materials on credit. Raw materials go up, so there's an increase and raw material is an asset. So we have to book it on the debit side. So this is why we book something like raw material too. And now because we buy it on credit, this is basically accounts payable or it's a liability and liabilities in the balance sheet are on the right side and we have an increase of the liability that means here we have a capital account and increase we book it on the credit side so what we basically book is then raw materials to accounts payable and now we only need basically the amount if this is 100 euro then the book record is raw material to accounts payable 100 euro so this is very simple right and this basically this logic this beautiful logic holds all over the entire double entry bookkeeping system. Now you can ask, what are about accounts which are not recorded in the balance sheet, like the income statement or the equity transfer statement? And that is also easy because both of them are basically closed at the end of the period via the equity account. So this is why we consider them as subsidiary accounts of the equity account. We will talk about this in a moment. So let's look at the structure of the balance sheet. So the balance sheet we already know. On the left side we have the assets, on the right side we have the liabilities or sometimes it's called equity and liabilities because to be correct they are both on the right side. So let's look here at the assets. They are on the left side, right? So this is basically our balance sheet. If we look here, this is the assets. And these are the liabilities. And this is just the same logic we have already talked about. If we have an increase um, in an asset, we book this on the left side, we book it on the debit side. So these are the increases. If we have a decrease, we book it on the right side of the T account, so on the credit side. And with liabilities, it's just the opposite increases on the right side, on the credit side, decreases on the left side, on the debit side. So this is fairly easy. Think about our book record, raw materials. There we had uh, an increase in an asset, so we booked it on the left side, on the debit side, raw materials too, and we had an increase of a liability, so we booked this on the right side, on the credit side. So raw materials to accounts payable. That was our book example book record. So now we go further and we look at income relevant accounts. And if you look at the income statement, we have two positions in the income statement. These are the expenses. The expenses are on the left side and the revenues are on the right side. So if you want to look at it, you can also look at this like the income statement. And then again, we can think about the structure of the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, we find the equity on the right side of the balance sheet. And if we have an expense, our equity goes down. So that means if our expenses go up, our equity decreases. And think about the structure now. If we have an increase in an expense because it goes down, that basically means it decreases equity, so it decreases the capital of the company. This is why we have to book increases in expenses on the right side. And sometimes we kind of correct expenses because we have a false booking or something. Then there might be a corrected book record and then actually decreases in expenses, which is kind of rare because you can ask, give me a real example about this, but they happen on the 
credit side. And then if we look at revenues, it's just the opposite because the revenue actually increases equity. And equity on the right side of the balance sheet, this is why we, if we have a revenue, we book an increase on the right side as well. And if you have a decrease, like a corrected booking here, we book this decrease in a revenue, which also decreases equity on the left side. So this is the log logic which holds here. So again, if we know the structure of the balance sheet, then we can already logically infer on which side we have to put a position in our book record. And basically with equity transfer accounts, it's the same. Right? So this could be, again, our equity transfer account and we have increases in the equity uh, transfers when we have a positive deposit. So they must be on the right side because equity is on the right side and withdrawals are on the left side because if I have a withdrawal, it reduces my equity. It's basically the entrepreneur directly takes money from the equity of the company. So this is again the same logic then. Withdrawal is something like the expense in the equity transfer statement. It's, uh, of course, a withdrawal is not income relevant because it's just basically an equity transfer. But if we withdraw money, we reduce equity of the company, so we reduce capital on the right side of the balance sheet, so it must be booked on the debit side um, of our T account. And of course a negative withdrawal, a decrease in the withdrawal only happens again if I do some kind of correction that is then on the right side, on the credit side. Um, with deposits, it's just the opposite. A deposit increases equity, so it must be booked on the credit side, on the right side, and if I have some kind of correction, it must be booked on the debit side. So hopefully you understand the logic. So the logic is really fairly simple. So you remember the structure of the balance sheet, and then you already know when you know what really happened, for example, if I bought raw material on credit, where to book, which position in the book record. So all book records basically follow a standardized procedure. This is a three-step procedure. First of all, we need to name the account or the account. It can be several accounts, but in our example book record, we had only two accounts whose debit side is affected. So here we had the raw materials. Then we name the account or the accounts whose credit side is affected. So here it was accounts payable because we bought the raw materials on credit and then we state the amount of each account. And of course if only two accounts are affected, like raw material to accounts payable, then the amount on both accounts must be the same. Because what always happens is I balance the, credit, uh, the debit side and the credit side. So the overall sums in a book record must be the same. So what I book basically is debit to credit. So this is the simplified language of bookkeeping. And then I enter uh, the account record in the journal. And this is how a journal looked in older times. So here you see the different book records, the amounts and so on. So very simple. This is very old. Nowadays, of course, we all do this in software systems, ERP systems, which are specialized in recording book records. Thank you very much for watching this video.